Hey guys, it's Josh Brown. I am here with one of the most recognizable uh, people in all of finance. He is uh, Wall Street's most recognizable face, Peter Tuckman, otherwise known as the Einstein of Wall Street. Every time you see uh, any article about a crash in the market, a bull market, a bear market, it's always Peter's face that you see, that beautiful expressive face. And I'm so happy to have him here today uh, because as many of you know, Peter has been suffering with COVID-19 and we're just so happy to see that you're okay. Peter, say hi to everyone, first of all. Hey guys, Einstein and Wall Street, good to be here. Thanks so much, Josh, I love your positivity. I just love that you've been talking about recovery and uh, and your enthusiasm is wonderful and it's good to be here with you today. All right, so I don't I don't wanna make you talk too much and, and put you through too much because I know it's been a tough few weeks, but tell us what happened, like what, what, what the timeline looked like for you. I appreciate you asking me. It's sort of, I've been, people have been coming to me on social media and asking to tell the story of what it's actually like going through the two to three weeks of, of experience COVID-19 and what you go through because it's not over yet. There are people, all we're hearing about are these negative numbers about people who get sick and then they die and it's sort of, a, it's abstract and it's it's def, definitely distressing. You know, it's important to note though, I, I looked at a number yesterday, there were 16,500 people who went into ICU, but 13,500 were discharged. Yeah. So there are people who are getting better and I think we need to know that. And what I would love to share is what I actually went through so that people know what to do, what to expect and uh, along the way on this journey, because it's it, it's brand new. This is a new norm. This is an, an unknown virus. And so I, I appreciate the opportunity to share that. I'll just start out that it was three Tuesdays ago. I've had the disease now. I've had the virus for 23 days. Oh, my and God. And on a Tuesday night after work, on the 17th, I think it was, of, of March, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night with really raspy bronchitis type symptoms, really bad headache, sort of sweats. And I realized that obviously it was just as the, the, the virus was starting to hit here in the States. And, and um, so I realized that, you know, that definitely I was symptomatic. So I went to the exchange, the stock exchange had already set up an, uh, an amazing little organization outside the uh, floor at 11 wall where we had doctors and we had nurses and we were tested for, uh, for our temperature. And then if you were symptomatic, they would give you the test. I walked into work that day because I knew that th this was where I'd be able to find the answer, right? And I knew I obviously didn't want to infect anyone else if in fact I did have it. I got tested on Wednesday morning. I got sent home. It was actually six or so days uh, later that I received the results just because it was that spiked Wednesday when everyone started testing. So for six days, so, wait, for, so for six days, were you, the, were you saying to yourself, this could still just be flu. This could still just be. Absolutely. I watched the system, the, the symptoms more for the, for the first three days, temperatures started spiking up. I felt sort of really bruised body wise. I was getting uh, uh, big sweats at night and, and sort of these odd nightmares. It was sort of an un unpleasant feeling. And I just felt like maybe I've got a flu, but you know, I could sort of read the writing on the wall. Every day I was feeling worse. It was that significant. So I was able to put together a really great privilege that I was able to put together this team of doctors. I have an internist, I have an infectious disease guy, and I have a frontline real gangster doctor named Dr. Julia Smith at NYU, who's, who's a family friend, but who basically, and the two stock exchange doctors, I have to, I have to really call them out in a big way, Dr. Please. Chen and Dr. Tabia. Dr. Chen and Dr. Tabia, they were the COVID specialists at the exchange sort of looped into my world once once uh, I had been tested. And they were incredibly attentive, incredibly helpful, and they walked me through it. So basically what happens is you actually start getting sicker every day. Your temperature starts spiking up every day. You start, I started getting headaches and severe neck pain. I felt I was bruised on, on my body and I lost all sense of smell and, and taste. So it was clear something was going on. At that sixth day, I did get the phone call from Dr. Chen that I had tested positive and we sort of started a protocol and where, where are we gonna go from here? What was so important to me about this team was the open lines of communication that because I really started feeling like I was going to die. I mean, every day I ended up spiking up to 103.7. I had between 
uh, 101 and three quarters and 102 and three quarter temperature for almost 12 days. So that's, as that's started, amazing. That's amazing. It, it, it was amazing. And what they really want, what was odd is it was the only thing you can do is Tylenol. I did get a Z pack once they realized that the infection was pretty, pretty, um, that the virus was getting a hold of my body. And then unfortunately around day 14, I ended up, um, getting what they diagnosed as uh, spiral meningitis, which unfortunately is presenting itself co-mingling viruses with the COVID. And that attacked the back of my head and my neck. And I basically peaked out at 103.7, um, insane temperatures. Uh, that was the night I literally, I was standing up against the wall with a neck brace on, just counting minute by minute. So, you know, what was amazing was if I didn't have these group of doctors, I surely would have gone to the hospital. And from my understanding of what's going on, nothing good's happening in the hospital. They're trying to save lives, but clearly they're, they're way, way overtapped as far as we hear it on TV all the time. So, so that, was, that was the most surprising thing that, that you had told me is that you were told by medical professionals, unless you need a ventilator, do not come to the hospital. How, to the hospital. how scary is that? You know, hey, look, I was sitting here alone. I had been alone for 16 days. Your mind starts to play tricks on you. I was so lucky to be able to have this this team really to, to walk me through it because I knew from watching what was going on on TV and hearing what was going on on Twitter that at the hospitals, they were overtapped. They didn't have enough ventilators. Dead people were dying and that it was almost more dangerous to be there than at home. So I want to share that with people to know that we're still in the middle of this thing. You know, that is the key here. At all times, my doctors made it clear to me. They said, you are going to feel like you want to die. But just the only thing we really want to know is, are you restricted? Are you suffering respiratory distress? Which means that you can't get a full breath when you breathe in. And even though I had bronchitis and I had, you know, sort of tightness there, that never happened. And that was my lifesaver because that's basically where the lungs start to fill up with blood and a number of the other organs and obviously I've researched this thing to death just so I know what I'm experiencing. Other organs start to fail and that's why people actually don't they die of pneumonia, they die of kidney failure, they're dying of heart attacks as a function of COVID. So it's, it's, you know, it's important that you know that you can feel as bad as I felt and still get to the other side. So, right? so tell us about the other side um, because I think, I think you're, you're probably the most well-known Wall Street personality trader. Um, I, uh, J, uh, uh, James Gorman just came out and said that he's recovered from COVID, the CEO of Morgan Stanley, but we didn't even know he had it. So I think like you're like the face of like the Wall Street person that's gotten the disease. You've now been fighting it for three weeks ish. Where So where are you at? So my temperature broke about three days ago, which was a significant difference. That kind of melt felt, the doctors felt that the virus was moving its way out of my system. A lot of the collateral damage of the other virus I got and basically the dehydration effects on kidney and other organs that it had are still present. You know, fatigue is the most overwhelming thing for me now. There's some damage and the nerve damage. I'm suffering from severe headaches and neck pain. All that being said, it's a significant difference. I feel I'm over the hump. They've made it clear to me that I am going in the right direction towards recovery, but it's a long recovery. So people need to be aware that this, this and, and one of the other things that's important to note is this disease has a way of morphing itself from my understanding from Dr. Chen that said um, that you can feel better for a couple of days and then it'll swoop around for round two. So I ask people to avail themselves of medical attention the best they can to stay home. I really have to do a shout out to every, all the executives up at NYSE, Stacy and John, and um, Josh King um, were there for me. They emailed me and checked on me every day. Dr. Chen, Dr. Tabby were amazing just to have that sense of somebody who is actually in the front lines of the disease to know that I will get better. That You know, there's that spiritual struggle you go through when you feel like you're gonna die. And uh, there is another side to it. Sorry. Uh, I, am, I am getting there slowly, slowly, but... Um, I, I want people to know that people do recover from this. So Peter, let's let's talk about the New York Stock Exchange. Um, they've been able to very successfully 
keep things going, keep the markets open. And I know that's near and dear to your heart that um, there's continuity for investors and traders. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So look, it's been my life for 35 years. You know, uh, it's something that I, I feel I, I, I offer myself as an ambassador to it because I love it. I always talk about the human factor in markets. We are the preeminent human market in the world, if not the only one. And I've gotten the sense from, look, there are people, you know, in all different networks around who are, who are uh, floor haters, who feel we don't really serve that much of a role and all that. I have no point in addressing any negativity. What I, the most heartwarming thing that I've found is that I've gotten a sense from people throughout the world who have reached out to me is there's that confidence that they feel that everybody is watching the floor on a daily basis. They are looking at all of our stories. You're there as a correspondent, as a, as a hedge fund manager. There are people down there, all the DMMs, all, I'm just one of a bunch of wonderful people who are on the bus down there, you know, that the DMMs and all the other brokers and all my coworkers in my firm and whatnot, that we offer that sense of confidence, that whether it's a direct contact or not, people love to see that we are down there. It's like walking up, you know, hitting turbulence on a transatlantic flight and going and getting, being scared and knocking on the door of, of the cockpit and there's nobody there, right. right? That's what we do. We're there to, you know, to, to curtail volatility. We're there to give that confidence of the human factor. And I think you love it. You come down there twice. I do. Days. You, you know that sense of the human interaction. It's not as big as it once was, but it doesn't matter. It's one person talking to another person, talking about you know markets, giving some clarity, breaking down what's happening in the world, and, uh, and it adds confidence. And so I couldn't agree more. Sick. We'll be back. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, I couldn't agree more. And I was saying to you before, one of the, one of the things I miss most about doing my job from home is coming down to the floor every week, seeing all the familiar faces. And it, I think for investors around the world, they do like the fact that the, the modern exchange is a combination of very, very high technology, um, as well as experience and people who understand how everything is supposed to work. And it has to be that way. And so I think everyone watching this um, is saying, you know, we want Peter back. We want, you know, we want, like, I, I think people are going to be, look, you were like the face of, as I mentioned, the traders who, who had been infected, Wall Street people who are suffering through this. And I think your recovery will be inspiring um, for people that watch the markets, know who you are and know what you stand for and what the exchange stands for. So I'm so happy and relieved that you seem to be on, on the other side. I appreciate it. I really you know what, as soon as it's, and I hope sooner, obviously, than later, but I believe that we're going to be back really soon. It will be the force it always was. In fact, it will probably, you know, I think that we don't know what it's going to look like on the other side of this, but we can now make it as much as we can, right, to be able to develop relationships one-on-one, -on -one, see how the trading floor is back to normal, getting that incredible community. You got to know that the stock exchange community, it's been around since 1903, is some of the most powerful philanthropic family people, you know, who are always reaching out to people and, and are all those humans who are in between you and the actual execution of your, of your, of your stock. So it's I want so to true. wish everybody a happy holiday across the board. Holy week for the Jews. Happy Passover. And Josh, I love you. I uh, love you too, Peter. Thank you so much for doing this. We really, really appreciate it. And I will see you again very soon. See you on the other side of crazy. All right, my man. Uh, that's been Peter Tuckman, guys. Uh, go ahead and show him some love in the comments below. Show him some support. Uh, he needs it right now. And uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with you soon.